Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Just Do Life podcast, where we not only talk about wealth, we're going to dive into health, entertainment, investing, getting ahead, mindset, everything. And today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by the head of property division, Jessica Donald. Welcome, Jess. How are you? Good. Thanks, Sam. That's good. That's good. Let's uh, let's get to know you a little bit before we get started. Tell us a bit about your journey, your experience, you know, where you started, how you got to become the head of property here at JDL. Yeah. Look, before I joined JDL, my background is property conveyancing. So I worked in property law there. Um, because of being in that environment and being exposed to a lot of different aspects of property law, it's given me a lot of expertise in helping our clients make informed decisions, especially when signing contracts and what to be aware of and things like that. Interesting. So when we're talking about contracts, you know, obviously that's a, um, a huge area to navigate for, for clients. Is that really what would, I guess, set you apart from someone else who just deals as a real estate, for example, as you can actually guide clients through that entire process? Yeah, definitely, because I guess it it helps me help our clients understand what it is that they're they're signing, I guess, and keep them informed. Absolutely, because that can be such a daunting area is when you get a a contract, you're unsure what to do. It must be so great for your clients to have someone like you who has that as a background to really show them everything. You know, this is the clause, this means this, this is your time frame. That's really cool. Excellent. So how does your line of real estate work? Because I guess you're you're a director of a real estate agency as well, but this line of property is a little different, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. Look, JDL, we don't sell houses. We sell investment strategies. So that is a big difference. We just use property as a vehicle just so the, to help our clients achieve so their what, financial goals. So what kind of channels do you use then when you're sourcing properties for clients? Yeah, definitely. So I use my relationships with different builders and developers. And these are relationships that have built been built over you know, my past 12 years at JDL. Um, so there's a lot of trust that goes into those relationships um, just to ensure that when I'm sourcing these particular vehicles for our clients, that they're meeting their individual needs. So it's very much like a reverse real estate agency. So instead of being product focused where a client would go to see a real estate agent, for example, and you know, in the window, you see all the pictures of this house is this much and this house is this this much. Really what you're doing is you're building a strategy for the client first and then sourcing a property that matches what they're looking for. Is that that right? Definitely, it's very individualized. Excellent, so for anyone listening who really does want to start their investment journey, why would they use a company or a specialist to help them on that path? Why shouldn't they go to the real estate and point to a picture up on, on the window and say that one? <laughs> a lot of people are time poor and they can't give it the time needed to, I guess, do the research and analysis um, and to also it's knowing what questions to ask. So when they come to a specialist, they're getting access to their network and tapping into their resources, which puts the trust back into the decision that the clients are doing the right thing for them. I think that's a really important point to expand on because doing what I do, I've spoken to clients numerous times where they've had absolutely no advice, they've had they've had no process in place, and it's led them to positions where they've made all kinds of mistakes. So. I want to break down the actual process at JDL where a client will show up, have no idea on anything. And what we do is we educate because we want to educate from knowing nothing to literally knowing enough to become a full-time investor. So in that process, there's multiple meetings, understanding analysis, facts, reports. That's all my side. And then it comes to you. And I think what a lot of clients don't actually realize is how much work you do behind the scenes when you're preparing, say, for example, one of the 44-point checklists, getting together all the infrastructure reports, the government um, projections for the future. There's a lot to it. So if I can pause there and just ask a couple of questions, you know, what's what's the 44-point checklist and why is it so important? Yeah, sure. The 44-point checklist is um, a really important tool that we use in JDL Research 
to help identify areas that they tick all our minimum criteria, which they include transport, infrastructure, health facilities, employment, um, just what the government has pledged in spending in infrastructure in and around those areas. These all are big key indicators to ensure that that property is in an area that's going to grow not only short term, but long term. I think that's a great way of explaining the micro elements that we look for, but we also go through the macro. So there are times that you and I have sat together and you know, we've pulled the latest ABS data and we've sifted through it to look at things like population growth, where the population's moving to, factors like the median house prices. Like it's a lot of work that goes into even just finding that area. So I always like to explain to clients where you're not just looking from uh, uh, a suburb level, but you really start from a national perspective. Then you divide it up into each individual state. And then you start looking for the different cities, the satellite cities, the councils. It's, it's a lot of work. I'm really impressed with all, all the effort that goes into finding a property for clients. But there's got to be some pitfalls at the same time. There's got to be areas where people, if they're not careful, can really make some blunders. Yeah, definitely. They can buy, you know, some examples are by um, overpaying the price for a property more than it's worth, um, not doing the correct research and actually asking the questions of your your local real estate agents, things like that. Um, also not diversifying their portfolio and having all their properties in the one area. Um, not allowing enough money to manage that property for unexpected expenses like maintenance and, you know, your emergency repairs. Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to bring up a couple of examples there because everything you're saying is ringing true with clients that I've sat with in the past couple of weeks. So there's one doctor that I sat with where he was working rurally and because he was working out there, he decided he was going to buy an investment property there. So it was quite a low cost. That was 10 years ago. And in 10 years no growth whatsoever. But then what happened when you say not having funds set aside for um, for maintenance and repairs is he now has to put in $200,000 for renovations on that property. And that's only going to lift his rent by something like $30 to $40 per week for a property that cost him about $100,000 to buy. So I can definitely understand a pitfall there. Are there any examples that you have as well of, of clients where you know they might have tried to do it themselves, ran into a few issues? What do you think? Yeah, look, over the years, we've had clients, you know, come to us saying, look, I found this property online. It's a hundred grand cheaper. It's only six years old. They've decided to go ahead and and buy that property. Um, Look, unfortunately, they have come back to us and there has been that unfortunate realisation that, you know, they didn't do their proper research and ask those questions that they possibly should have about the maintenance and history of the property. And they too have come across, you know, against unfortunately, like like I know, for example, in that property, there was actually a leak in the roof and because it was due to poor property maintenance, it wasn't covered in their insurance. So it can be scary. Because as a second owner, you don't have the warranty attached, do you? Whereas if someone builds the property, that's their property, they have the warranty. Is that right? Is that how it works? The structural warranty, for example? Your structural warranty is with the house itself. Okay. And that's usually seven years. Um, so that does transfer. However, there are uh, conditions on structural warranty that people do need to be aware of what's covered and what's not. Um, and if you're buying an established property, you don't know the real history and maintenance. Like if you were to buy a used car, you know, mm. unfortunately, you don't get that full history and then, you know, you come across the issues later on. It's not until you drive away and the engine light starts going up yeah. you've just paid for it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose no one has x-ray vision on something that's six years, eight years, ten years old. You just never know. That's and especially it. if you didn't build it yourself, you don't know what quality and what care was actually put into that property. So, yeah, I can definitely understand that because... As far as mistakes are concerned, would you say that's an investor mistake or are there other mistakes people can make when they're investing? Look, there's an element of risk to every investment decision you make. It's just what you do to minimise that risk. Mm. So what would you do to minimise risk? What are some ideas, examples, ways that you can look to, I guess, 
maximize or minimize things that can go wrong? Yeah, just making sure you do your research and reaching out to the specialists who that is their field and that is what they do day in, day out, just to help minimize your risk exposure. So things like if it's an older property would be, I think something that comes to mind is a termite inspection. You wouldn't want to skimp out on making sure there's no termites in a house. Oh, definitely. You you would be doing your what they call the pest and building inspections just to make sure. But look, unfortunately, they don't show up everything as well. To a degree, they can only look at so much um, base value, I guess. Yeah. So property, it's not, a, it's not a guaranteed investment, so to speak. There are some risks to it. Yeah, like any other investment, property investment does carry an element of risk. Um, things that can affect it is the economy. That's a very big factor in what's going on at that time. Um, The local real estate market and property condition can impact performance. Um, It's just taking into account all those factors, you know, and ensuring that you're making an informed decision and asking the right questions. That that way you're helping ensure that you're making the best informed decision you can at the time. I think also it's about making sure that you're going in for the right reasons because if you're looking to invest in a property and make a million dollars overnight, it doesn't work like that when you look at the numbers from any perspective. You know, we, we always tell our clients it's a long-term focus, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Property is for the long-term, not the short-term, just to get the maximum gain. It's I know some people can make the decision to time the market when they're deciding to enter, which if they're not realising that it's a long-term hold, then that's also where they can also get called out. All right, so Jessica, from doing this for 12 years, let's give our listeners a couple of tips, shall we? What do you think are the three best indicators for a suburb to invest in? One of the three important ones that I look at for our clients and also for myself personally is I look at vacancy rates. That's a very strong indicator that if about supply and demand, I also look at infrastructure where the government is looking to pledge investment over the next decade and I look at the rising property values which is an indicator for capital growth. Excellent, real brilliant. So would you recommend investing right now? Is now a good time to to be buying an investment property? That is a good question because I know that there's a lot of in the media, a lot of negative things at the moment but look when is the right time you've got to do what's best for you and take into account your financial position and look if you can and your numbers work I would say not to hold because the property market they always go through these cycles if we look at the history of the last decade two decades this is nothing out of the, the norm and if interest rates were where they were two decades ago you know, when we were looking at 18 19%, people were still buying. And if you look at where property values have come from there, um, it's, it's a result of inflation. And what happens with inflation is property growth, price growth. So where we'll be next year in a decade's time, its property prices will continue to grow. So it's getting in as early as possible. And I think that's extremely important because what Jess is talking about is it all comes down to strategy is you don't want to just go out and buy a property off your own back without doing any research on number one, your own numbers, number two, your own finance numbers, and number three, not knowing what areas are going to suit you best with your cash flow and growth output expectations. So when we're working with a client, Jessica, she will see them after a complete strategy has been built. She will then do all of this research in order to bring to the client the number one best asset that's out there in the market right now for them for their financial future. So that I think is the most important thing, Jessica. So thank you so much for sharing about that. So without naming names, is there any clients off the top of your head that you can think of who you know, you've know you sourced an incredible asset in a hard to get area or someone who you just found exactly what they were looking for? 